Hey there, it's Sarah from the No More Wasted Days podcast, and I'm coming at you with a shorty episode. Today, I'm going to be talking all about moderation. Why are we all so obsessed with wanting to moderate our drinking? And I say this because I wanted to moderate. I wanted so badly to reach the point where I could take it or leave it when it came to alcohol. And I was really hoping that if I took a 30-day break from alcohol, that I would achieve that. That all of a sudden I would be like, alcohol no longer holds this power over me where I'm always thinking about it. Instead, I just can have one or not have one. I did not ever get to that point. What I did find out about myself, though, is I'm not a person who can get to that point. And by trying to achieve that goal, I also found out that I had already tried to achieve that goal a number of times and I had failed, which is something I say a lot to people when they comment, well, why don't you just try to moderate? Why don't you just drink more responsibly? I always say, I was trying that for all of the years of my drinking, and I was failing miserably. So I already collected the data that I'm just not a person that can moderate. However, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, maybe I am a person who can moderate. Maybe I am a person who can end up having just one. We're going to take a little bit of a deep dive into this as much as we can in a shorter episode. So you can really start deciding, is this something you want to do anyway? Because that is another key point that I figured out in this quest to be a person who could take it or leave it when it came to alcohol is I started to discover that I actually wasn't a person who wanted to take it or leave it when it came to alcohol or who wanted to have only one drink. I was a person who liked to get drunk. I was a person who really wanted alcohol on the table, so to speak. So I was not that person who actually wanted to become a normal drinker. I was the person who (laughs) wanted to overindulge. And I see that with myself in other places too. And that's kind of how I started collecting that data. And I also started figuring out it's going to be a lot harder to moderate than it is to just quit altogether. So let's dive into why is it so hard to do this whole moderation thing? I have four ideas that are going to help you see why moderation is, one, such a hot topic and why it's also just pretty hard to achieve. So number one, it's really hard to find facts on safe alcohol consumption. If you go do a random Google search, because that's what I did when I prepared for this, you're going to find that the quote unquote safe amount of drinking is stated to be one drink per day for women and two drinks for men. But then you're going to see that a heavy drinker is considered eight drinks or more per week for women and 15 drinks per week for men. Now, if you do the math right there, if you're just having one drink per day for women, which is the safe amount, that's seven drinks. But a heavy drinker is considered eight drinks a week. That's only one drink difference. So that's just conflicting energy. And it just leads us down this rabbit hole of you saying, well, maybe I'm actually all good. I'm only one off from the safe amount that they suggest. That is exactly what I would do when I would start looking at articles like that. I'd be like, well, I'm just one off from that, or I'm not that far away from what people consider a safe amount. So I'm just going to work harder to get to that safe amount. But then you really start thinking about it on the other side. If seven drinks is safe, but eight is dangerous or heavy drinking, then why even bother? If the line is that fine, then why risk it with crossing over it? That's the mindset that I finally went into. The other thing you're going to start finding is if you start researching things like, is alcohol bad for you? You're always going to find articles that state that some amounts of alcohol can be good for you. Now, here's the deal. You're going to find these different articles that say these different things because it's what you're looking for. You're looking for the information that's telling you, well, no, some amounts are okay for you. And then your drinking brain starts to go, okay, well, that one article that I really didn't do the research to find out how factual it really is, is saying that uh, a little bit here and there is not all that bad. So it really is that You look for what you want to see, and it's really easy to find what you want to see or what you want to hear in the day and age of so much information on the internet. So this type of research just kind of helped me see how hard it is to really find the best information and how easy it is to tell ourselves that we are finding the information that we want to find for ourselves. I hope that that idea makes sense for you. It is something that really opened up to me. I was very biased in my research 
as a drinker and I was looking for information to tell me that it was okay to keep consuming alcohol. And when I actually started to get truthful about that and own that, it made it a lot easier for me to say, okay, time to go find the real research, time to go find the stuff that I really didn't want to read as a drinker and start seeing that any amount of alcohol is not actually good for you. And it's something your body doesn't actually need to survive. So why even bother? That's what I finally started diving into that made it a lot easier for me to say, you know what, I'm not even going to try to moderate. All right, number two, It's hard to say I'm not drinking because it's the societal norm. It's something where friends or even complete strangers are going to wonder, like, why can't you just cut loose and have just one? I cannot tell you how much I hate it when people say, well, why don't you have just one? Like, I already tried that. Oh, my gosh. That's what I was trying to do all the time. Now, why are other people putting this pressure on you? And it's not always that case, but when we're trying to quit drinking, we may feel like other people are going to put this pressure on us. And that's why we start to say, well, you know what, I'll just moderate and I'll have just one and then I won't have to answer these questions. Well, if people actually are asking you these questions, I crack it up to these two things. When you quit drinking, it shines a light on other people's drinking. They quickly wonder if they have a problem or not, or can they even drink around you anymore? Or will you ever drink again? They start having all these questions and guess what? All those questions that they're having internally are absolutely none of your business and you don't need to answer them. That's not your job. The other thing I often think is when you tell people that you're quitting drinking and they're trying to put you back into the mold of the societal norm that says, drinking is normal, it's okay, it is because misery loves company. People don't want to be left in their drinking habits alone, and it's nicer with you there normalizing their drinking for them, especially if you were drinking buddies. Now, this really is actually for people who were your drinking buddies, because people who are quote unquote normal drinkers, which I don't quite understand, those people are like an anomaly to me, but people who are normal drinkers and can have just one really aren't even going to question your choice to not drink. They're just going to kind of be like, oh, okay, whatever floats your boat, because they actually are people who can take it or leave it. So they I haven't put it up on this pedestal the way drinkers tend to do. When I look at that idea of like, oh, misery loves company and somebody is pressuring me to drink along with them. And I have that in the back of my brain because I don't say that to people out loud. I don't go, oh, you only want me to do this because misery loves company. That would be really rude. That's not what I do. But having that thought in the back of my mind helps me stay strong in my idea and my conviction to not drink at all. Now, also, we have been fed a lie that only a certain group of people who are called alcoholics can be addicted to alcohol. You will have a certain genetic makeup and you will either be able to drink or not be able to drink. That is what I thought in my life. But alcohol is an addictive substance, period. It's not only addictive for alcoholics. It's not only addictive for addicts. It is addictive for everybody. And when I started to figure that out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is not something I need to have anymore. I do not need to keep drinking because it is just an addictive substance. I don't need it in my life. I used to say, I have an addictive personality, so I won't do cocaine. I used to say that about myself, yet I was drinking all the time because drinking hadn't caused me to have a bad or life-altering event. And because that hadn't happened yet, I kept thinking, well, that's okay because we're taught to be able to drink in a responsible manner. And I really thought, oh, well, I'm drinking in a responsible way, yet cocaine off the table for me. I wasn't going to have that at all. Also smoking, I never felt bad that I had become addicted to cigarettes because it was fed to us that nicotine's addictive. It's something that anybody can get addicted to and it's not really your fault that it happens. It's just an addictive substance. But when it comes to alcohol, that's totally your fault that you became addicted to it because you should have been more responsible. You should have just drank more moderately. That is the idea that we are told from like day one when it comes to alcohol. So really look around at that and just see how has alcohol become this societal norm in our life? And how can you break that idea instead and say, you know what, it's not a societal norm for me and I'm not going to drink this addictive substance anymore, not even one. Now, why is another reason why we want to moderate so 
bad. Number three is we believe that alcohol makes life exciting. We really, really believe that. We want to moderate so badly because we believe that if we quit forever, we're going to be so boring. I thought that. Now, here is the truth. I wasn't exciting when I drank. I was just a boring, drunk person. Now, let me break this down for you. I wasn't going out to these really cool parties and doing these really amazing things. I wasn't. I was drinking at home with my husband. That's what I was doing. I was watching TV while I was drinking. I was eating dinner while I was drinking. I was just doing the normal everyday things, but I was drunk while I was doing it. And alcohol slows down our brain function, making our life appear to be more exciting. That is why we think it makes our life more fun. It makes our life more exciting. So I really wanted to be able to moderate because then I could have a few drinks and still have that fun or be exciting. And when I broke it down and finally told myself I wasn't exciting when I was drinking, I led a really boring life. And now I actually have a more exciting life because I can go places whenever I want to because I don't have to worry about drinking and driving. I put myself out there a little bit more because I don't have anxiety dragging me down. My life actually is more exciting without alcohol. And I think you'll find the same too. Now, on our fourth idea of why do we want to moderate so badly, it's because it takes a lot of courage to say, I'm never drinking again. That idea of forever is so overwhelming. I did not go into my alcohol-free journey saying, never. Oh, I'm never going to drink again. I didn't say that on day one. I said, okay, I'm going to try out this whole alcohol-free thing for 30 days. I really made it a relaxed thing for myself. And then I got to those 30 days and I thought, okay, I'm going to go for 60 days because I'm feeling pretty good. I want to keep seeing where this is going. So I really had to weigh my options. I could start drinking again and work hard to moderate and be safe. And I knew it was going to be so hard to moderate and be safe. But how would I assess when I was starting to snowball? Because I hadn't been able to assess when I was snowballing before in my drinking, so how would I do it now? So I had to find the courage within myself to say, you know what, I'm not going to drink anymore. But it did take me a while. Another idea I had on this whole quest to moderate and not having the courage just yet to say, I'm not going to do it. I would say, I, I could only drink on special occasions. What if I only drank at like weddings? Well, whose wedding? Whose wedding is special enough to get that drink, right? Or I could only drink on my birthday. Well, if my birthday is so important to me, why am I going to celebrate it by drinking poison? Or it's like I really had to go through all these scenarios with myself because I was trying to create those rules that I had for myself as a drinker, but I was going to make them more strict because I didn't quite have that courage within me just yet to say, I'm never drinking again. So I came up with these ideas. But then my rational brain would say, well, what would make it special? When I drank, every day was a special day or a stressful day that deserved alcohol. And I knew that I could get back to that idea so quickly. So it made it a little easier when I started seeing that and started weighing my options in that way and going, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Now, another thing to think about when you're thinking about the courage it takes to say, I'm not drinking anymore, because it does take a lot of courage. I was really worried that people would ask me, why aren't you drinking? Why did you decide to quit completely? The truth of it is, people rarely ask me that, okay? I rarely have people ask me. And when they first did, I just said, oh, I'm taking a 30-day break. Or I'd say, oh, I took a 30-day break and I feel so awesome that I'm going to keep going because I just feel really good. And then another thing I started doing, because it rarely happens. I really am going to stick to that. It rarely, rarely happens that people ask me why I don't drink. But when they do, I've started doing this thing where I practice what I call my elevator pitch. So say you're stuck in an elevator with somebody and you only have like so much time to tell them what you do for work. So maybe you practice that so you can tell them what you do for work in a quick and concise way. So start practicing why you quit drinking in a quick and concise way. Don't get emotional with this. Just be really quick with it. Now, I rarely nail my elevator pitch in person when I'm doing it, 
But because I actually do practice it at home in my mind and sometimes I actually say it out loud, I get pretty dang close. And a lot of times it just goes like this. You know, I quit drinking for 30 days to see what it would be like because I had been a drinker for so long and I just felt so good that I kept going. And then I just started feeling even more and more better. And I thought, well, if I can feel this good without alcohol and I don't actually need alcohol to survive, I'm not going to drink anymore. That right there is usually a quick enough explanation for people that they're okay with it. Now, like I said, I don't always nail that, but it's pretty close. Now, I had to finally start seeing also when I was finally going, okay, I'm never going to do this again. I'm done drinking. Now, I'm not going to try this idea of moderation. I had to finally see the truth that it was easier for me to completely abstain than to moderate. Moderation led me to creating rules, and I would break those rules. So many things to keep track of when it came to those rules. And I've heard this from so many other drinkers that have made the choice to not drink anymore, that the rules were so much a part of your life. And you would say things like, okay, I'm only going to drink on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning. Like, I'm going to have these three days. Okay, well, then you'd break that rule because you'd decide to have a drink on Wednesday. So then you'd start saying, okay, well, I'm only going to drink wine. I'm going to stick to wine, no hard alcohol. And then somewhere along the line, you would break that rule. Or it was just this endless cycle of, I'm only going to have one drink on Fridays, and I can have two on Saturdays. It was way too hard. And it turned out when I took my 30-day break that then turned into 60 days to 100 to a lifetime, abstaining made it so I only had to follow one rule. The one rule was don't drink. That was it. One rule was so much easier to follow than all the other rules I was trying to come up with. So that's what I finally started to see that gave me the courage to say, I'm never going to drink again. And when people ask me, are you ever going to drink again? And they, they kind of are curious because people are. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't really see into the future, right? But in my heart of hearts, I never want to drink again. So that answer has finally became easy for me to answer. But it was not easy in the beginning because I really, really wanted to moderate. I really wanted to be one of those people who was a person good who could have one drink and make it last like an hour. Who are those people? I wanted to be that person. But I started to realize that I'm just not that person. And I don't need to be that person. I can be the person who just says, I'm not going to drink anymore. So all of these reasons finally made me say, no more. I'm just going to stay away from alcohol forever, and I'm not going to moderate. And I just want you to think about all these things too. And maybe you're going to see just like me, it's easier to say no to one thing rather than try to control a whole bunch of things. And the data out there on healthy alcohol consumption is all over the place. So why don't you just stick to what you know is really true, is that you don't need alcohol to survive. It doesn't elevate you in any way. So just leave it. Stop the idea of take it or leave it and just leave it. I hope that this leaves you feeling empowered. I hope this helps you feel excited about your alcohol-free journey. And if you liked the shorty episode, be sure to give the podcast a rating and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you know a friend who would like this, share it with them as well. All right, I'll be in your ear in the next episode. 